Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on how to reintroduce FODMAPs. So FODMAPs and SIBO are a big topic being discussed today in the, in the paleo sphere, if you will. So what are some common side effects or symptoms of FODMAP intolerance? Well, that would be bloating, gas, reflux, flatulence, lots of different GI discomfort. If you're one of those people that looks like you got a food baby right after you ate, you probably have a FODMAP issue. So what are FODMAPs? FODMAPs are fructo, oligo, disaccharide, monosaccharide, and polyols. They're just certain sugars that are found in certain fruits and vegetables and starches that can potentially feed bacteria, bad bacteria, in susceptible individuals. So again, we have this kind of ratio of good bacteria to bad bacteria, right? So the good tend to be a lot higher than the bad. And then what happens is when we have certain sugars that are there, that can flip the ratio. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually, from one end, we're working on starving, right? We have one end, we're working on starving. And the other end, we're working on killing. And actually, the last end, we're looking on re-inoculation. So there's three different things we're trying to do. Starving, killing, and re-inoculation. So typically, at each time, phase one, two, and three, are good times to start reintroducing FODMAPs. So first things first, do you have SIBO, leaky gut, an autoimmune gut disease? More than likely, you may benefit by cutting out FODMAPs per, for a period of time, and definitely cutting out grains, legumes, dairy, and all, all refined sugar. So, if you have any of these conditions, you definitely want to work on some dietary restrictions. And you're also going to find if you dig a little deeper outside of just FODMAPs, FODMAPs tend to be connected with SIBO, but a lot of times we also see infections, right? If you have a chronic Epstein-Barr or a chronic Lyme issue or a chronic parasite or bacteria or fungal issue, that may also be causing FODMAP intolerance. So sometimes FODMAP intolerance isn't an underlying cause. It may help the symptoms of the infection get better. So the root cause will be getting rid of the infection, but people that have a lot of these symptoms will still feel better by cutting out the FODMAPs and potentially adding in some enzymes and hydrochloric acid as well. So one and two. So again, three phases, starving, killing, and re-inoculation. So let's talk about how we're gonna actually reintroduce some of these FODMAPs. So phase one, 30 days after we've cut out a lot of these foods, so 30 days into starving, so starving the FODMAPs, we're going to try reintroducing some of these FODMAPs back in. Now, really important, we're only going to add in the medium FODMAPs. We're going to add in the medium ones first. There's a um, list I'll put in the description below the video done by Aglia. Uh, she's a paleo dietitian that goes over which foods are low in FODMAPs, which foods are medium, which foods are high. And we want to add in the medium FODMAP foods first. Medium first. Also, there's such a phenomenon that I've, I've coined called FODMAP load, if you will. And FODMAP load is nothing more than the fact of you eating broccoli for breakfast, asparagus for lunch, and maybe some spinach, or I should say not spinach, but onions or garlic for dinner. So the load of all those FODMAP accumulates, right? Kind of like the glycemic load. So when we reintroduce FODMAPs, we want to make sure there's no other FODMAPs that would potentially add on to that load. So we want to add one FODMAP, one medium one, and we want to do one per day. So we don't want to be adding multiple different FODMAPs. That's where we can cut down on this whole FODMAP load thing. So I typically recommend for compliance sakes to go to the medium list and find a FODMAP that you typically like to eat. Right? Patients get more food in their diet, more variety back in, they're gonna feel better and better compliance. That's, that's a good thing. So add one medium food back in, only do it once that day, one to two times per that day. And again, make sure there's no additional FODMAPs added into it. If we don't have a problem with the food, we can add it back into the rotation. If we have a problem with it, we kick it back out when we add it back in during phase two. So we try during phase one. If not, we put it back on the to-do list for phase two. Phase two is typically done 30 days after starting an antimicrobial treatment. Typically, we're trying to work on a gut infection during that antimicrobial treatment as well. Those treatments can last 60 to 120 days. So we start in about halfway. 
Now, from that standpoint, we've altered the gut microbes significantly. So how we process carbohydrates, sugars, and fats, and how our digestion is, is much different. So it's a great time to start reintroducing FODMAPs back in. Same thing, start with the medium ones, work your way up to the higher ones. If we can't add it back in, we then add it to our list to do during phase three. Now, phase three is a different phase because we've already added in a whole bunch of good bacteria back into the gut. We typically add it back in some pre- Biotics as well, pre being like fertilizer, the probiotics being like seeds. So seeds always grow better in the presence of fertilizer. So if we add a whole bunch of good fertilizer and a whole bunch of good seeds, pre and probiotics, we're going to see a nice shift in our gut biome. We may be able to handle FODMAPs much better. So let's recap. When we reintroduce FODMAPs, we do them one at a time and we do a medium FODMAP first. We reintroduce it during one, the starvation phase first. If we have a problem, we add it during phase two. Phase two would be the killing phase. We'd add it during the killing phase. If we have a problem with them, we'd add it to the list and try it again during the re-inoculation phase in phase three. So hopefully this helps you kind of give you some good strategies to add FODMAS back into your diet. These are the same strategies that I use when I work with my patients. So again, if you're having any gut issues or any health concerns that you want to get addressed or, or looked at maybe a little bit more clearly, feel free and reach out and grab my info below and subscribe so you can get more of these videos right away. Thanks. This is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great night.